Hi, thanks for joining us. We've assembled a panel to talk about data quality and data accuracy with a number of Illumina sequencing experts. Joining me today are Jordan Stockton from our informatics marketing group, Depeche Rizal, also from our informatics marketing group, Jeremy Preston from our sequencing applications marketing group, and Mark Laurent from our sequencing services lab. So there seems to be a lot of questions about data accuracy uh, and almost some confusion. So it seems to me that one of the first requisites when you look, a bit, look at a next generation sequencing system in the market is, is accuracy. Can, can you guys talk a little bit about why that seems to be? In this exciting next gen space, we are hearing accuracy defined really with one metric and it's simply not the case. We often hear numbers of repeated nines attached to accuracy metrics. And what we want to do here is really uncover and dig to the grassroots of accuracy. There's a range of different factors that contribute to it. It's not one single thing. So we're here to discuss that and uh, dig a bit deeper. Exactly. And you know what? The truth is that the factors such as coverage, such as false positives, false negatives, what does it mean to have gaps in your coverage? These factors are not uh, broadly understood in the research community. So what we did was we did a lot of work to kind of try to understand these metrics and then presented a sort of collateral to basically paint a broad picture of what data quality really means. And a lot's been said about reducing the cost of especially human genome resequencing. And I think there's a perception that we wanted to test, and that's that as a system becomes more accurate, you potentially need to do less sequencing, and you can save time and money in the aggregate. And we wanted to see what the parameters were that affected the cost of a truly complete genome, or at least as complete a genome as we could put together. Well, certainly in, uh, in our, in our uh, services where we work with many customers, um, we, we have to look at all this. We don't just deliver a whole genome. We deliver a whole genome of quality, and we really look at all those metrics. And for a long time, we've been looking at quality at various, various metrics. So, um, you know, the, uh, the, even, the even coverage, the gap size, um, all these things are irrelevant. And, and we've been looking at that for a while, and, and we think we do quite well. Yeah, so to, to sort of reiterate, based on your question, I think it's important to readdress quality now because we've looked way too narrowly, and that's kind of where Jeremy started mm -hmm. from the beginning, and look holistically about what it takes to get a good genome out of a system. And that's why we're here. Why do you think there's been such a debate about what makes up a truly good genome today? And what's, what kind of research has been done to provide some scientific understanding around that? I think one of the issues is, is actually understanding what comprises a genome, what comprises the variants, and what we're trying to discover with sequencing. And to do that effectively, we need to understand the core components that lead to the quality of the genome that we're going to sequence. So the idea is to really get to the bottom of it to come back up to a real biological context. Exactly. And you know, the challenge is that there's really not a lot of publications or research out there that does a head-to-head -head comparison between two different platforms, because that's quite a challenging thing, right? Because there are so many variables and parameters that you have to control, that to do it in a controlled manner so you're doing an apples-to-apples -apples comparison is really difficult. Having said that, there's enough data out there that in the public domain that we sort of looked at just to see, well, you know, all else being equal, how are two different sequencing data sets performing versus each other. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of uh, experience we're doing now, but the challenge is that a lot of this information has not existed in the public domain before now. And I think hopefully this project will act as a resource where people can look not only at the tools that we use to make some of these comparisons, but use them to assess effectively best practice because it's been really hard to be systematic about what changes make improvements in a genome versus not.